first aid. Thanks for helping me, Joel. First aid is something we should take seriously, really. And to that end, I'm going on a two-day first aid course with First Aid Lakes. It's all about remote first aid, so how to deal with emergencies in, in the mountains. So I've been involved with uh, several first aid incidents, unfortunately, in, in the past and recent. I had to patch myself up very recently on the Movement Masterclass. And fortunately, I always carry this kind of first aid course for mountain walks, either one, two people or the family, and uh, a larger kit for groups. So first I want to go through what the contents of this first aid kit and then take you through the course with first aid lakes and we'll go back over my first aid kits again and how my philosophy and thinking's changed. And importantly what I'm hoping to get out of this as well and to share with you is a little bit about the philosophy and mindset how to cope with emergencies uh, in the mountains or, or at home because it's never easy. You need the skills, that's vitally important, the equipment and how to use it, but also you need calm mindset and practice to approach those situations. So let's go. So with this lovely backdrop of Skidor there, let's have a talk about the contents of the first aid kit. But <coughs> First, there's three things that I always take in addition to the first aid kit. That's a trekking pole. There's always somebody got to trip up or sprain an ankle. Some sort of shelter, even on this lovely warm summer's day, I've still got my emergency shelter. And some extra spare warm clothing. And perhaps the thing that uh, is the unwritten thing is good mental attitude to keeping yourself safe and then you're not going to need any first aid. So I've got two kits both in dry bags. This is my group kit. This is my small group family and individual. Let's have a look at the contents of the group kit. So as I say I'm going on the first aid course tomorrow and the next day and I want to see if I'm going to change this over time. I'd love to make it a little bit lighter. So we're going from uh, this end to that end it starts off with more kind of serious incidents and wounds and gets to the more minor uh, spectrum. So firstly is one of these SAM splints. This is a uh, EVA and aluminium splint that you can wrap to body shapes. This is an Israeli bandage for heavy bleeding. You can get some serious compression on that. In here are some scalpel blades and scalpel handles, safety pins and tick removing tweezers. The idea of the scalpel blades is I use scalpels a lot in my work and I'm pretty good at getting foreign bodies and splinters and things out of people. So in here is uh, dressings, there's triangular bandage, uh, there's some Acti wrap, which is kind of a elasticated compression bandage. I can use that for splints and strains. I've got sterets for skin closures. I've got this heavy duty elastic TheraBand thing that I can use as a, as a tourniquet. So this is the medication bag. Uh, there's ibuprofen, paracetamol, antihistamines, and aspirin in there. So a mix of painkillers, but aspirin is uh, particularly good if there's a suspected heart attack. And this is basically cleansing and a foil emergency blanket and some vinyl gloves and a condom that you can use as a light tourniquet, uh, compression, sealing and hydration for small burns and as an emergency water carrier. This is the kind of liquids. There's Vaseline that's good to help reduce friction for blisters. There's an emergency eye wash that you can also use for wound irrigation. This is antihistamine liquid because I know my kids don't like the tablets. I've got some germaline that's a good antiseptic and also a mild painkiller. And then some 1% steroid cream, which is really useful for midgy bites. And then these are minor dressings. 
some uh, more wipes and wound cleansing things and then kind of seasonal stuff essentially in the Lake District this time of year. Smidge that midge and some Factor 30 moisturising lotion. Here's Blencather over here. Skiddle. Clough head. Great Melfell. So off to the two day first aid course starting tomorrow. Let's uh, see how we get on. And after the course, I'm going to come back to you at the end of this video and show you what I'm going to change in my first aid kit and some of the some of the tips I've picked up. Cheers. So we're going to compare three first aid kits. We've got Luke's personal and small group, would you say? Yeah. And we've got Dave's, who is also Bounty and Rescue. It's just, it's just a personal kit there. Personal kit. So this is this is how I have my first aid kit. And the first thing I'd like to make people aware, I, have, I actually sort of have two first aid kits, which sounds really geeky, but it's not. I've got my little sick first aid kit, what I call my ouch pouch, which is the one just at the top there. <laughs> and then I've got my big sick first aid kit, which is at the bottom of my rucksack, maybe easier. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so little sick first aid kit come out all the time, all the little things that we come across. So, tick tools, ticks are on the up in the UK and the prevalence of Lyme disease in those ticks is on the up a little bit, so just be aware of that. Um, I've got a pair of scissors for cut, mainly cutting plasters up. Uh, I carry just like strips of plaster that I can cut to shape rather than individual ones. Um, I've got um, vet wrap, the red stuff and the blue stuff. Um, sun cream, because lots of kids don't put sun cream on properly. Uh, some wipes um, and some eye wash. Some batteries, spare batteries for it. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. that plaster that you can cut. Plasters, yeah, in that middle bag, yeah. yeah. I've got a lot of list of back to the same thing really, haven't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So just for yeah. Um, then I've got my blizzard kit, my so that's the blizzard jacket. Mm. And that's the vet wrap, the dog one. Um, and then I could I might upgrade that to a blizzard blanket for a, a bigger one. Those sorts of things. And then I've got my big sick first aid kit, which as I said I never get out because it's and avoid doing big sick first aid kit stuff. Um, I've got um, some dressings, a pair of scissors again, some gloves, um, uh, aspirin, paracetamol, I have a profit in there. I do actually have tried all the bandage, I thought it was gone, but it's still in there. Um, biohazard bags um, for either dirty dressings or uh, a burn. Mm -hmm. um, burns dressings, I do a little bit of stuff with uh, campfires and things like that, bushcraft stuff. So. Um, a proper burns dressing, but you could, again you could improvise that with a, a biohazard bag. Um, my rescue mask, my CPR mask, there's the uh, um, sand splint, so it just opens up. Um, it's actually quite big, but you can obviously fold it in half. You know. I've actually cut one of these with a pair of uh, medical scissors, because these scissors are really they're just a, a strong lever action, so they, they work like tin snips rather than sharp. Um, and, and then you just fold it into whatever you want it to be. And that just quick. Mm. You, you can do loads of stuff. I like it because it's got, it's got uh, ideas on it and stuff like that. But as you say, you might, you don't, you know, don't have to carry it. It's just an option, isn't it? Um, I'll just sit in my bag. That's it. And then a bit more eye wash uh, and then some um, glucose. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an outdate. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to go off, is it? This is up from the rescue team. That day, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're away just for the week with family, so I normally have the face mask and everything as well. Yeah. Um, I leave it all in that one bag, and in that bag is also that little thing then. Like spare pair of hands. Oh, right, yeah. Just sort of yeah. So, so, pen, paper, and a charge thing for phone. Real. Oh, yeah. There's a pack. And then, so those are sort of separate, and then all the rest of these get shoved into here, so it's just a standard yeah. uh, need of first aid. Um, so these life system ones are really good, actually. Yeah, really good. I've got an extra trauma dressing in there. Yeah. And a bit of gaffer tape as well. Yeah. And then the standard life system stuff yeah. by Blue from Paracetamol. The one thing I would say about the life system ones, just double check the scissors, because they okay. often come as these, these little, yeah, these scissors. 
Um, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, put, put a decent pair of tough cuts in. Yeah, that's the only thing I'd... Is that bar of soap? This? Mm. Uh, tape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a hotel soap. <laughs> <laughs> Little jams. <laughs> Yeah. Continental breakfast in there as well. What I tend to do is just put stuff in a little plastic bag so I can see it. Yeah. I've got this splint in my bigger one, I've got a, a much bigger one than yeah, that. Great. Um, some plasters in there, um, some wipes, gloves, strip of uh, aspirin and ibuprofen and everything. Tiny little um, burns thing right. there, but on the other one I've still got a bigger yeah. one. Um, the glyco gel. And then I've got a little mini head torch just in case things go wrong. And I won't take all that out there, but just sort of a few bandages and things like that. And then I always, I always have, as part of my first aid kit, uh, something like this. And I've got a little shelter there as well, which I always take. It just sits at the bottom of my, my rucksack. Yeah. Um, the bigger one obviously has got more stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But for a personal first aid kit. Yeah. Let's do like and if you're out with a group, yeah. actually, you need. Well, this is it, and I think that's the key thing: is what's appropriate in the environment you're working in or playing in. Go out on your own, great, loads of stuff there. Having been on the first day course, I wanted to share with you now the changes I'm going to make. So the kit I'll still be carrying will be a survival shelter for everybody, but I'm going to carry adequate clothing for myself, but a extra jacket is coming out, and I'm replacing it instead with one of these, a blizzard survival jacket they're available in blanket versions and sleeping bag versions but i've ordered a two layer jacket and that should be arriving soon and staying on the trekking poles so let's get on to the first aid kits so this is where we got to in the end so this was the small individual first aid kit this was the big first aid kit, but I've completely hashed it around. I love Luke's philosophy of one that you take every day and one that you would add for possibly more adventurous activities or a bigger group of people where you're likely to deal with a bigger range of issues. So this is what came out of my daily kit pseudocrem why do we need that and for the foil blanket i've got the blizzard thing liquid antihistamine well you know they're just going to have to take a tablet one that's much lighter in this tape so what went in instead that you haven't seen is an emergency torch i've got a lighter one on the way a really really good whistle an asthma inhaler an emergency waterproof notebook with the at mist reminder little face shield Luke was using the uh, proper face mask but I can't get away with carrying one of those yet and some more uh, versatile EAB bandage that's kind of uh, doubles as a good sort of splinting material and also that what went in there was some emergency gel an eye wash and some decent suntan cream so I suspect this is going to increase in weight but it's going to give me a lot more a lot more versatility yeah let's have a look disaster that's gone up by 200 grams not the right approach but remember i'm saving weight by not carrying extra clothing and i'm going on to the blizzard jacket instead so that's saving me uh 200 grams so on balance i'm at the same place now when it came to group kits i've got all of this stuff because I'm always going to take this and then just have the group kit if I want to so all the uh, the dressings here the liquids and creams the triangular bandage the tape the Sam splint uh, even though he carries on look persuaded me it wasn't a really a great idea the antihistamine the uh, band to knock up a tourniquet so instead I've got a real cat tourniquet so got some bandages there some decent wipes uh, an Israeli bandage that you can really get compression around a wound but I've got on the way coming some Celox a jet injector and some scissors now this used to weigh 950 grams so let's have a little try of that now So now that's 411, 
And if we add that, if I was out with groups, that's 1,082. So that's gone up by 100 grams, but remember I've lost 200 grams. So I'm actually lighter, but importantly, I've got gear there that can help me to really deal with a wide range of emergencies. And an important thing to remember is this is not intended as a replacement for fir formal first aid training. Get trained yourself, attend a course like the one I went to with Lakes First Aid. It really, really infused me and took this away from being a kind of like a boring first aid thing. So finally, I hope you found that worthwhile. Remember, this is not meant as a substitute for proper first aid training. I went on the remote or outdoor first aid two-day course with the Lakes First Aid, and it was it was fabulous, to be honest. Uh, I've been on lots of first aid training before, but this really infused me with uh, new knowledge and a new a new enthusiasm. I'm not a first aid professional. This is not intended as first aid training. Again, go and get train yourself and enjoy it and be more relaxed in the hills because you're going to feel better prepared. There's some great advice on the BMC website about first aid kits. They take way less than, than me but you know I'm taking my kids out and uh, groups of scouts and cubs I've got to be prepared. Okay thanks for watching.